on guys, it's Coach Steven with 15 points of tennis. And in part one, we talked about the weight transfer, holding your weight back and timing the shift to generate pace. And compare that to the fall step, which is transferring your weight really early, which although it limits my power, is really good at deflecting pace. Now in this video today, we're gonna to go much deeper on the weight transfer. And it might seem like overkill, but it's really that important to getting your strokes feeling smooth and natural. It's also one of the concepts I personally struggled with the most. I've been so accustomed to hitting off my back foot open stance, playing defense for many, many years. I never developed this very critical skill. And it's the easiest thing for, you know, if you picked it up, you know, early on and naturally as a young player. But I'd say this is one of the longest to implement, maybe toughest concepts if you didn't. So hopefully the tools and materials here can accelerate that process. So without further ado, thank you guys for supporting the channel and subscribing. We're gonna get started right now. Some players assume that finishing with your back toe up qualifies as effective weight transfer, but that's actually called ankle snap. And yes, it's part of the kinetic chain, but I'm also able to hit an open stance right here and get ankle snap without any, using any weight transfer at all. So these are completely separate topics. All right, now picking up from halfway through part one, the weight shift is exclusively and specifically this very subtle movement from back to neutral, back to neutral, okay? It's very short from here to here. If you're practicing this, okay, wherever you are at home or watching this video, make sure as you do this move, you're not wiggling your hips like this, okay? Or you're not leaning back and forth with your torso like this. You, I need to stay straight on the axis to have my rotational power. So as I shift from back to neutral, see, I, my, I stay over my center right here. Then I can rotate. What it should feel like though, is this little bump or hit with the legs that pulls the whole swing through. Now a great an analogy comes from martial arts where they practice actually being able to strike from very tight spaces to teach you how to get power and use your body. So what we're gonna do is equate that to an elbow smash, which is pretty much all weight transfer. Okay, so I want you to, wherever you are right now, to practice throwing an elbow smash <coughs> right here on one side, then go on your other side and feel in your body which side is more in sync to get that, that shift and pop, shift and pop, all right? You're gonna, probably gonna be more natural on one side. For me, it's my, my right side, okay? Also make sure you're not taking a big arm swing like this for power or leaning and tilting like this. You won't get any power. It's a short little boom, concentration of power right here. That's, that's the same feeling, boom, that I get when I hit my strokes. It's subtle but important to identify when you're getting that elbow smash like pop into the ball. So this one's decent right there. Okay, another decent one. This next one's I'm gonna step early so I don't get quite that pop and that focus of power. Not bad. Not bad again, but I'm leaning a little bit. This one is excellent. That's the timing. This one I'm late. See how to rotate extra. So I was late on that weight transfer. Although my forehand's gotten better, my backhand is still smoother, more natural to get that little shift there. That elbow smash like feeling. I feel like I can just transfer more weight, you know, from back to front. Still, it's hard in a match. Watch this first backhand. Watch my lower body. See how I have to kind of pull and turn? That's weight transfer that wasn't very smooth. And then just play the rest of the point out. I'll show you some more examples in a bit. I get lucky to win that point. Watch this first backhand after the serve. This one is much better. I get that smooth weight transfer. It puts me in a much better position to play the rest of the point out. Okay, we're going to show you that bad weight transfer again. This one's decent, but watch this one right here. You still have to turn a little extra with my upper body. The weight transfer just wasn't smooth with the ball. And then I hit it short and he clobbers me. I know I've used the term hot knife through butter before, but that's essentially what good weight transfer feels like. Now, tennis also confuses the concept of a weight transfer sometimes with forward momentum. Okay, but these, again, are separate concepts. See, 
in a sport like golf, you, you have to be able to transfer your weight while stationary, all right? There's also a lot of lower body you know, kinetic chain involved with the weight transfer as well. So what I want to do is simplify the process and help, hopefully explain to you what I think you should be feeling as you go through this weight transfer process. And I'm going to use graphics of Rory McIlroy, who's one of the top golfers in the world. Now, so starting off, okay, step one, okay, when you get coiled and turned here, you need to feel that torque and that pressure go down that back leg here as you get loaded, all right? Step two, you're going to feel that transfer from the back side to front side of your body here, the shift in energy. As you feel the shift in energy, you're going to feel some of that pressure come up your back leg and go down your front leg. Again, you got to feel that pressure down on that front foot here. And this little transfer of energy, that's what initiates basically the racket head, club head, right? To kickstart your swing, even before your upper body moves. And lastly, right before contact, whether you're hitting a tennis ball, any, any shot you're hitting, you're gonna actually, especially off this front foot, but really it's both legs, feel that little bit of rise at contact, right? Here, right? See how I rise at contact? So hopefully those, you know, graphics, those arrows, were helpful and instructive. I want to put it in tennis terms though. Okay, when I talk about your feet feeling heavy, okay, it's almost like your feet are heavy and gripping the ground, right? You, as you transfer that weight, I need to feel, again, this pressure going down that foot because I need something to push off of. If I empty step here and it's light, I can't, see, I can't push off something I'm not feeling pressure on. So, you know, on the opposite, end of the spectrum, if I'm leaning forward here, I lose rotational power. So look, I need to be able to shift while staying neutral. So a great way to think about this, in my mind, is like a little half crescent. So I'm going down, shift, and then up. Down, shift, and then rise. And then keeping my center point at all times. What's helped me though is just the graphic of going diagonally down into my front leg. So I am pushing down to this front leg. Even though we empty step down into this front leg here without leaning and then rising and up while rotating. Okay, and if you can get that smooth, that's your weight transfer. I want to thank Flunky Review for leaving this excellent comment and I agree 100% that throwing the medicine ball hard is a great way to really feel that weight transfer. I've also seen players surprisingly though who throw perfect medicine balls but don't do this when they're hitting. So let me start with some bad examples. The lean as you throw. This one is the lean and then throw. Then you have the get low squat and throw. Then you have the lunge and throw. And all these are good at deflecting pace but it's impossible to generate pace and attack this way. I know sometimes players just start doing this on every single shot, sometimes just based on habit. I would recommend practice rising as you hit first, then the weight transfer will come more natural. Now weight transfer is also a very pivotal part of how your swing flows as it's a guiding force here that pulls everything through. See, every motion starts with the weight transfer. So look at my uh, coil and uncoil. You see how it, it follows the weight transfer here? Okay, so let's talk about that lower body, all right? As I shift and coil back, this knee, front knee should actually dip in slightly here. Not only to keep my center of balance as I rotate back over one balance point, but to aid me in my rotation to turn back. See, if my knee was, was out like this, as I turn back, it would kind of restrict me. So I get this little dip from the knee as I turn back here. Now, if I'm hitting a semi-open stance or open stance like how I would on my forehand, I'll just show you on the backhand side though, okay, this knee for a semi-open stance or open stance would dip much further like this. Now, similarly, as I hit and unwind, this back knee is going to dip down here. If I fall step, the knee is actually going to go down as I hit. If I'm weight transferring, this knee is actually going to rise up as I rotate. So, okay, watch the knees closely look so it's like back. See how they dip slightly? Everything flows uh, 
from that weight transfer, right? If I'm transferring a lot more of my weight. Here's some open stance to show you how that lead knee dips in and that back knee dips in to finish. I'm actually probably dipping a little too much on some of these and it's throwing me a little bit off rhythm. When you're playing it's probably just a little bit less but like some of these I gotta get my knees in sync with the ball now. Now in terms of flow watch my buddy on the near side he's got a great forehand and watch only his knees his lower body don't look at the ball open stance that little dip that's probably the right amount of dip so he's gonna go from close again to open and he's gonna hit a few more close stance here but still watch how the knees dip back slightly as he turns and there's just a flow a lot of players who don't have this type of flow look very stiff with their lower body even if they're using their legs see so back and through now in terms of the upper body recall that Rory McIlroy talked about you know, how he feels that little bump with the legs kind of initiate and start his entire swing before his arms even move. My first move on the way down, it's that movement there. There's that shift onto the left side before anything happens up here. Similarly, okay, when we get that racket prepared and turn sideways, okay, the arm stays still. Okay, watch this. The arm stays still. Important to note, when I weight transfer, the arms haven't moved. You can see from the side camera that my arms haven't moved, but the weight shift moved my body away from my arms to create space under here, all right? My arms do not move like this with, simultaneously with the tra weight transfer. This is called, you know, bad flow, right? Instead, look, again, this shift, as I shift forward, you create space, and that's, that's what allows the racket to snap forward. So this right here is the start of that crack of the whip to snap the racket head forward. A really good way to think about this is if I were to throw, let's say in baseball or just throw any ball in general, as you can see, okay, I'm not going to move my arm at all. I'm just going to shift my weight back and forward, forth from, from between my feet. And you can see there's this little catalyst, this little initiation of forward momentum right here right and that's what when you're hitting the ball you should feel like this little here my arms aren't even moving but that weight shift jolts the racket forward this should also complete the rotation backwards because see how this works very closely with that rotation so it's like and then it snaps the racket forward all right i wouldn't worry so much about this if you're more a beginner intermediate but in part one I talked about that very quick and you know instant release of the racket head and that's what's going on you know with that weight transfer you know and snap forward just compare that to a lot of players who instead of moving you know the body away from the arms like this and have it pull forward they'll just take a much bigger backswing see this is a much slower motion right they'll move the arms further away from the body to hit Okay, that's very different. Even if you're taking a big swing, let's say on the forehand, you can still feel, see the little weight transfer right here? Just, you know, start the swing. Watch when my racket reaches its furthest point back there and my body moves away. See how the racket doesn't move forward until after my body moves forward? The racket doesn't go back further, it stays there, my body moves forward, and then it snaps through. Now, shown from a different perspective, Basically a point in your backswing there should be a moment where it feels like your backswing Starts to slow down and almost feels still and then that weight transfer jolts it forward So right there only watch his lower body watch how he transfers and when he transfers that racket Just jolts forward and then the arm finishes Check this forearm out here. My buddy should feel still that weight transfer snaps that racket forward the arm finishes We'll see it. I know it happens so fast, but that's very different from, again, people who want to take the arm back further. It's a very different type of body mechanic. Now, there are two types of weight transfers. Everything demoed up to this point was a weight transfer on the ground, okay? But there's also a weight transfer in the air, which is fairly simple. You know, when you're loading on one leg, 
weight transferring in the air, landing on the other leg. Pretty much the same principles, you know, you're hitting when you're rising, but you're just making contact, loading, making contact in the air, and then landing, shifting the weight from one side of the body to the other. Common example would be like, you're hitting a high forehand open stance, sort of, you know, hammer shot in the court, you know, maybe a, a put away volley, shifting weight one foot to the other, a return, boom, same thing. Or it could be a step back forehand, where you're transferring your weight. A lot of scenarios, it just shows you don't always have to be moving forward to weight shift. This point, I'm gonna get an air weight transfer going from right here, right foot to left foot, sticking that landing. This next one is gonna be a high hammer forehand. More so of these weight transfers in the air are gonna be open stance. Close stance is more likely weight transfer on the ground. But as you can see, you can get enormous power even moving backwards. Now when it comes to closed stance versus open stance, okay, when you hit a closed stance, you get, you can shift a lot more weight from back to front here, all right? And your center of gravity, when I hit a closed stance, look, it shifts a lot further back to front, all right? So when I'm doing these bigger weight shifts, I generally prefer, look, one thing you can do is drag your toe up and or also make sure you bring your knees together. You see, so if I, don't, if I don't do that, a lot of times I'm gonna be leaning on the finish. Compared to if I bring my knees together, I can finish over one balance point, right, right here, with my weight on one point. So those knees together is very helpful. When you're hitting a more you know, open stance, how I often do on the forehand, all right, you can still, and you definitely should, transfer your weight, but it's not as long from back to front. It's actually just a very short <coughs> boom transfer here. There's probably maybe a little bit more rotation involved if you're more open stance or semi-open, but we're gonna talk about rotation a little bit more in its own series. If I don't drag that back toe up and bring my knees together, like on a false step, for example, then I'm forced to lean forward to counterbalance to keep my center of balance. Now watch how I drag my back toe so I can finish with my center of balance on my left foot. And this is a pretty good series of weight shifts. I'm just waiting and just timing and focusing that power of the weight shift at one point. It's a lot easier once you kind of get in the groove. From the side view, you can just see how much my center of balance shifts from back to front. Compare that to now these open stance, it shifts much, much less, maybe half the distance. Here's the footwork. I'm going to do the open stance weight shift and then rotate. And I'll explain this on the next video. But here I'm still shifting my weight and rotating, but it's fast. Shift, rotate. So to kind of end this video, guys, practice as much closed stance as possible, all right, if you wanna just accelerate the improvement of your weight transfer, like I feel your pain, you know, if you're just a prolific pusher or you just hit excessive open stance for many years as habit to an uphill climb it is to work weight transfer into your game, but I guarantee you, you're aware of this now. This is a concept really worth gaining proficiency in. All right, so leave your comments below. Let me know how it's going for you. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode.